Um, a lot of times, a common, a courtesy text message. Um, yeah. If you're in a salon where you have a receptionist, you know, um, reach out. Yeah. You know, have that receptionist mm -hmm. call that client. Hi, Miss So and So, we're running behind. Um, do you need to reschedule? Um, if you have another errand that you maybe could do first, exactly. Then you can come. Yeah. Um, things of those natures that uh, that a lot of times that you know it's a small things mm -hmm. that a client will just appreciate right. the fact that you know you're respecting their time mm -hmm. and the fact that hey, we're running behind, but we're letting you know that if if this is not going to work for you today. Day, we can reschedule you. You know, um, if you have an errand that you had planned to run when you left, go ahead and do it before you come. You know, so a lot of the things that we as stylists we overlook um, that are so convenient to us um, in reference to our professionalism and keeping that time management number one in the yeah. salon. It works on both spectrums too because if you're trying to keep, if you're a stylist trying to keep time. And then you have a client that's consistently late. It throws your whole schedule off also. Most definitely. So. You know, you brought up a very good point about using technology, the text messaging, um, maybe a courtesy email or anything to that nature. Do you have a particular program that you use for that to manage your customer's database or maybe their phone numbers for anyone else out there that might be looking for something? Do you... Um, for me personally, um, I use text messages on my regular phone. Okay. Um, as a suggestion to stylists, to salons, um, to, I guess, better set up something. Um, most salons now, um, they tend to have um, different POS systems, um, which will include client information, contact information, things where, again, if you're in a salon where you have a receptionist, you can easily have that receptionist call Mrs. Jones or Mr. Jones. Um, hey, let them know we're running behind. Um, Call them up, text them. Um, a lot of programs now um, on POS systems, they have options where you can send text messages um, via iPad, um, via com desktop computer. Um, so there's so many different ways in technology that we as stylists, um, we are empowered to keep our clients coming back. We're empowered to make sure that we're on a time schedule with them so that at any time, you know, they don't feel like they're just another client. Yeah. Right. You know, so there's so many ways um, in reference to um, time management in reference to text in reference to technology that we as stylists we can execute if, if in our salons or individually you know depending on the salon and how you're set up but there are many ways um, do you think that maybe they should go a little bit further maybe collecting birthdays or special dates to that client if you have absolutely. a personal relationship with yeah. them that you can send little uh, coupons or what have you absolutely um, the one thing um, as a salon owner and um, as a stylist um, the one thing that I have learned um, in 12 years of doing hair, um, whether from the beauty shop standpoint, now where I have evolved into the salon standpoint, um, clients always like to feel special. Um, anything <laughs> that you can do for your client in reference to giving back to your client, in reference to being able to make them feel a part, um, the least little thing that you can do for your client, um, going above and beyond, birthdays, holidays, anniversaries. Um, one thing I've started in my salon um, is even anniversaries within the salon. You know, hey, it's wow. your first year anniversary with me. Um, even if it's small things, such as a gift certificate, um, the little things like that that really helps your clientele base, and it's the thing that sets you apart from any other stylist. Um, it's that thing that on a day that if you are running behind with your time management, it's those little things like that that your client might give you that day. They might look over that, you know, 15 to 20 minutes extra where they had to wait for this appointment because at the end of the day, it's a personal bond that you right. have with your client. Right. With that being said, you can be their stylist, their psychiatrist, <laughs> counselor, right. life coach. You know, do you, <laughs> do you recommend anyone taking any type of maybe personality classes before going into this industry? Um, I would say not necessarily a personality class. I would say networking is one of the biggest things that I have learned as a stylist, um, as a business person, not just a stylist. Um, being able to network with people that have been in the industry, people that are coming into the industry, people that are still growing in the industry. To me, networking is one of the biggest things that builds your personality. Um, why? Because you're able to communicate with different type of people, younger, older, um, different ethnicities, um, understanding um, how to talk, how to speak, how to be able to reach out to your clientele and say, look, this is what I can offer for you. Um, being able to relate to clients from different cultural backgrounds in reference to their hair. Um, so I think networking is something that is definitely a must. It's something where in our industry, if you do not network, I feel a lot of times you become closed-minded. Um, you're not open to things that a lot of times you would ordinarily be 
and networking, um, the basic things, the small things that you can take back to your salon to help grow your business, uh, where will make a world of a difference. Um, had you not did it, you know, you may not see that result. So I definitely think networking is something that is a plus in reference to being able to build customer service skills. Okay. So a lot of times when you see salons, they normally specialize in a particular area, maybe natural hair um, or sew-ins or what have you. Do you think that it's better to have a variety of services that you offer or is it good to actually specialize in one particular area? Um, I absolutely agree that when you're in a salon setting, you, you're going to always have your strengths, you're going to always have your weaknesses. Okay. Um, I absolutely feel that, if, especially if you're in a salon where you are not the only stylist, I definitely encourage you to offer a little of everything. Um, my thing is always to myself. You know, I don't want to have to refuse a sale. I don't want to have to refuse a client <laughs> um, because of poor knowledge. Right. Um, I also feel hair shows, educational classes, seminars, things of that nature. Um, in our industry, they're so important to us. Um, again, those are the things that allow our clients to come in and say, I want to be natural today. Um, I might want to be relaxed tomorrow. I might want to updo next week. By the end of the month, I might want to shave it all off. Exactly. <laughs> and, and it's funny that you're saying that because that's how I feel. Because me being in the industry, it's a long time. Y'all going to say, oh, since 1988, I have learned how to do everything with hair. Yeah. There's nothing that I don't know how to and do. did I not used to challenge you? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> she would come in like with standard hairdos. I'm, the, I'm that one that's going to stretch it in pull back the 40s. You know, yes. the 40s. I mean, she was oh, walking and be like, here's a picture. Can you do that? And she and, did it. And everything. <laughs> because you have to be, you have to be able to she be versatile yes. and do everything that a client is coming in and asking you to do. I mean, sometimes, you know, they come in and they bring you a picture, you know, a Halle Berry or somebody and they got, uh, you know, you know, but we try to work it out. You know, you should be able to do everything. I, I mean, I understand some styles, they just want to cater to short haircuts and stuff like that, but it, you got to be able to do everything in case a day you're in a salon by yourself and somebody walk in. You don't want that person to walk out the door because you don't know how to do a particular style. I mean, it's like when you went to beauty school, they didn't just teach you how to do press and curl or they didn't just teach you how to do um, weaves. They teach you how to do everything from head to toe, you know, hair, nails, everything. You have to do those nail classes and stuff, even though I hated it. To get out, <laughs> I had to do it, you know. To graduate, to get your license, you got to do certain things. And at first, I didn't like makeup, but like, you know, we was talking about earlier, Walter, it's like, when you're doing a photo shoot or something and your makeup artist don't show up, which I never had that problem with you, yeah, Renea, but, but if your makeup artist don't show up, it's like, okay, um... I got to do something, you know, so I've learned how to do makeup too. So it's like, I don't like to, but if I'm in a rut and I have to, because somebody decided they don't want to show up and help me out, I can take care of that too. So we got to be well versatile in this industry to be able to succeed. Absolutely. And like you were saying, I'm piggyback what you were saying earlier. A lot of us are afraid to get out there and talk to each other and network. First of all, you have to have the personality to stand behind a chair. You have to be able to deal with all kind I mean you're gonna get all pe kind of people from all kind of walks coming and sit in your chair mm -hmm. and you got to be able to deal with that so being able to deal with that you got to learn how to deal with each other we go to hair shows you have business co no no we don't do that to each other we gotta embrace we're one big family and it's crazy because I've traveled to a lot of places and in New York when I did here in New York we knew each other from Long Island to upstate New York because we meet at hair shows and do stuff and do different things and it's it's good to to All network right. with each other and very good so callers out there if you want to know mm -hmm. more about the industry the number live call in number is on the bottom of your screen we are going to take a break and when we return you will see a live demonstration on going from yes. regular to fabulous <laughs> yes because I'm tired of sitting up here looking like this thank you for tuning in welcome to beyond beauty as I stated before we went to break, we are going to watch a live demonstration by our freelance makeup artist, Manea Latrice. All right, so we're going to kick off. Ladies, I think the number one thing we're asking about nowadays are our eyebrows and how we get them to look and flawless. The eyebrows, I must say, are a pet peeve of mine. They are the foundation of your face. If those are not drawn on right, then you won't look right. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead with a quick demonstration of that. And what we want to use is the angled eyeshadow or, or angled brush. 
if you can see, I don't know how well you can see here that it's actually angled. It's at a little tilt here. And I'm going to use a brown, uh, a brown and a, a medium brown and a dark brown shadow to go in and line um, Yannette's brows. And we're just going to demonstrate that. Okay. So you said medium and dark brown. Is there any pertinence to that color? Um, basically, whatever you feel complements you better or looks more natural on you. Okay. If we can see how the brows are appearing more fuller as we're going in, light strokes. Yes, and it's to her natural brow. Yep, to her natural brow. Light strokes. So if you have really thin brows, it's not a problem. If you have brows that doesn't fully grow out, then you know what, guess what? This, this brush and this eyeshadow has become your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Because believe you me, my natural brows don't look like this every day either. So is there any particular way that you want to, you know, stroke the brush? Is it just in one direction? Um, go with the more natural pattern to way you, the, the way that your eyebrows flow okay. naturally. Um, I definitely say stay away from that long um, stroke of a, of a brush or a pencil, you know, a brown or a black pencil. Be gentle to it because you want the look to be soft and subtle. Okay. And I have to keep in mind that this is supposed to be a quick demonstration. Um, one of those probably for the working mom or the working, you know, adult getting out there in corporate America that you don't have an hour to dedicate every morning to, to your makeup. But if we could see, I don't know how well the camera, if we look toward the camera, that Ooh, the brows are, very looking, gray. are looking fuller. They are. And don't, you know, you're teaching, you're, they're learning, that, so it may right. take a little time. Right, that's okay. true. <laughs> that's key. Practice does make perfect, definitely. And a little key to that, also to contour, but I'm going to stay away from it as time goes, that I will outline it with concealer to give it that more perfect arch mm. um, that, we, that we see. Um, I, I've heard they are in Atlanta charging people $25 to go get their eyebrows contoured mm. and shaped <laughs> like this. And how long will it last? Just for the night. Wow! <laughs> can I get it that industry? So, so that means if they can't pay to get it, I mean, if they can't do it themselves, they can go pay to get and it they done. they can go pay and get it done. So, so you can come see me, give me the 25 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we want to get into a, a common look that people generally ask about um, is the smoky eye. Ooh. Everybody like that. That's usually the evening look. Um, you don't necessarily have to use uh, black for a smoky eye. You can use brown. You can use any color that you're kind of feeling okay. to get that smoky eye effect. Um, but with your net tonight, we're gonna go with we're gonna go with a brown and a and a black for the smoky eye. But to start out, generally you want to use a primer, uh, which you can find in any. Um, major cosmetic line, MAC, of course, everybody knows MAC and Richmond, um, any of those. I, myself, I like to use concealer as my primer. The kind of, it, and what the concealer does, as like the primer says, it catches and it holds your eyeshadow so that it can last all day uh, for you. A lot of times you may see people who have really oily skin or something, you may find that their eyeshadow starts to show the creases and the oils in their yes. eyes. So that really helps with preventing of that and, and makes it look fresh all day. I'm a living witness of that. You know, yes, yeah. I get up and I make myself up like this every day. I don't wake up like this every day. <laughs> it's, like, when I get home, um, it's it's the, the typical Afri African American woman I'm putting on a scarf, wiping <laughs> the makeup off, taking the clothes off. No, 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 no. I see you working out in the gym. Well on uh, Facebook it, it, it and makeup. Be, it'll probably be a few more people <laughs> 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 She woke up flawless. You know what? One thing that I want, want to ask for those who cannot afford Mac or the big brands mm -hmm. out there in the store, if they were to go to their local beauty supply store, would the concealer mm -hmm. kind of work with that type of makeup? And it will. I have learned. I used to be. I used to have favoritism to Mac and all those other lines, Too Faced and 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 uh, Stella and all the of nine. those. You know, all you know. I used to feel like, oh, I wouldn't. I'm not going to touch that stuff in the beauty supply store. But to tell you the truth, it's just as good. <laughs>